it going guys? So I guess this is gonna be Moto Vlog number two. I haven't even posted Moto Vlog number one yet. That's gonna come out on Saturday. Oop, big bump. Uh, it's gonna come out on Saturday, which I guess is tomorrow. So what I'm doing is whenever I finish up a video, I basically just post it at the same time every week. And I think, at least from what I've read and what I've heard, is that's pretty good for the YouTube algorithm. They like for you to be very consistent. That was very impressive, dude. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that. Some guy's riding a dirt bike and he just pulled a wheelie. Anyway, super impressed. Um, anyway, so yeah, so I heard that's good for YouTube to kind of promote your content, assuming people are watching it. Uh, if you're consistent like that. So instead of just finishing up a video and then posting it right away, I'm just gonna post it at the same time every week. And if, you know, if I have a little extra time and I end up making two videos, then I'm not gonna post them both that week. I'm just gonna keep them, uh, just hold on to one and post it the following week or something like that. Just because things do get crazy and sometimes I struggle to be able to film and edit a video to make one per week. So, uh, so yeah, so I think that's the plan. Anyway, so I've been doing a lot of thinking about these moto vlogs and maybe some random like car videos. Like if I just have random thoughts and I want to share them on my drive home or on my drive into work. Uh, by work, I mean, you know, my clinical rotation. Uh, so I think I have an idea of what I want to do with that. Because most of my videos, kind of like I said last time, are just scripted. They're pretty well planned out. I know exactly what I want to talk about and more or less what I want to say before I even start shooting. And they're just like, they're organized, they're concise, they're not stream of consciousness where I'm just like thinking of what to say. And you kind of, you know, you read the title, you read the description, and you know what you get. So that's what I'm going to keep doing with that if I have a topic that I really want to cover. But with things like this, things like my motor vlogs and things like just driving in the car, I would really like to do that as well for a couple of reasons. One is because I just personally enjoy it. It's kind of like video journaling to me. Hopefully this guy doesn't cut me off. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like video journaling to me. Like I know I'm sharing it with a lot of people, but it's just, it's therapeutic to kind of talk and get your thoughts out and stuff like that. So that's the selfish reason. The probably less selfish reason would be like this channel is basically forming kind of a, it's kind of becoming a hybrid channel. So I originally wanted it to be just straight up information all the time, like nothing about me, not a vlog, you know, just like stuff that I think is useful to you guys who want to apply to PA school and things like that, and maybe even some other medical careers. So I thought that's what I had in mind for the channel, but then I started getting all kinds of emails and a lot of them were about like specific uh, you know, like specific PA topics, like, hey, what should I do with my application? What should I do with my essay? What do you think about this? How should I interview? Like, stuff like that, which is to be expected. And I totally am very happy to help in that case. Sorry, I'm distracted because I really want to turn, but this is a little bit of a, uh, of kind of a dangerous situation. So I, I'd like to focus a little bit here. How about now? Uh, there's a bunch of bikers. Hopefully they'll... All right, screw this. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm going to get back to my train of thought in just a minute here. But, yeah, this is... People are going crazy. I think it's rush hour. It's like almost 4 o'clock. So it's like rush hour. And people are just... I don't know. Like, people act all nice and everything and, like, courteous. And then you give them just a little bit of pressure. And then they start getting mean and they start getting antsy. And when you're a motorcyclist, like I said last time, that's just terrifying. You know, you really want people to be patient and not pull out in front of you and predictable. And if they're not acting that way, then we get real nervous and we don't like it. And uh, and if we're doing moto vlogs, we can't really focus on that. We got to focus on not getting hit by a car or in this case, a motorcycle. All right. Let's see, what do you think? Can I keep up with these guys? Yeah, I, I think I can. <laughs> uh, they're, uh, looks like they're riding cruisers, every one of them. They look like Harleys. I've heard Harley guys don't like Honda guys, and I'm currently a Honda guy. You know, I have a Honda motorcycle. So, hopefully they don't beat me up, right? 
I don't know. I don't really understand the whole Harley thing. I think they're kind of overpriced and they're a little too noisy. And I've ridden a couple and honestly, I wasn't impressed. I mean, like they look really good. They're really pretty. But I honestly wasn't super impressed when I rode one. And also they're so loud, I can't even hear myself think. And I'm like 100 feet behind them. Can, I really hope this video turns out because I can't hear anything. But anyway, okay, I, I'm done complaining now. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, my plan for things like these moto vlogs and things like driving in the car, just talking to the camera, kind of stream of consciousness, stuff I'm thinking about, is I've been getting emails that are like specific PA questions and like advice and things I can help you with. But also, I've been getting a lot of questions just kind of asking about like me as a person. And some people saw like my story and you know how I get to where I, how I got to where I am, my road to PA school, which has been like well over 10 years at this point and like you know my dedication and things that i've done in my life and surprisingly a lot of people have actually asked about that and have told me like it's motivational to them that someone's been through this and has put themselves through all this effort and all this sacrifice to get where they want so apparently at least a few people really actually want to hear about me as a person which i was a little surprised by maybe it's like two people but if it's more than that either way like i'm just i'm really surprised but i'm also pretty honored that people are inspired by my story and that they want to hear what i have to say and so i think that's kind of a win-win you know if you guys want to hear about my day and like my plans and things like that my life and then it's also kind of therapeutic for me to kind of get my thoughts together then okay like if i feel the need if i feel like there's something i want to say and share with the general public with the with the world and then I'm going to flip my camera on, you know, on a drive home or something, and I'll, I'll tell you guys. And these are very easy videos to edit because I'm not, you know, cutting out every, uh, every 10 seconds or every 30 seconds and, like, filming a new clip and then putting a ki all kinds of effects in and all that stuff. Like, I'm not doing that. They're much easier to do. I'm just kind of talking. So, yeah, like, what do you guys think? If anybody actually watches these, uh, like, life updates that I did, and then uh, like moto vlogs, I know this is just the second one, but if you want me to do these, like give me a comment or shoot me an email, just tell me like, I don't know, do more of these or maybe talk about certain topics or something. Just feedback, I really do like feedback. I want this channel to be as helpful as I can to as many people as it can. So I'm really hopeful that you guys will give me some feedback. But anyway, okay, so with that long introduction, the main things I wanted to talk about today were some things that I've learned and just kind of how rotations are going. So today and yesterday, I was actually doing a mini rotation at a, path at a uh, pathology lab, which was really interesting and really unique. I don't know if you guys watch, uh, it's called The Good Doctor, Sean Murphy. It's this really, really good show about um, a surgeon, a surgeon resident, who's autistic and he's got all these struggles with you know his personal skills but he's an incredible like savant level surgeon so it's just really interesting and it's i mean the actor just plays it very well he does an incredible job and then like all the other cast are just really good so why did i say that oh because in the show he starts dating this pathology resident or i think she might already be a pathologist whatever oh that is a cool truck so anyway, so I didn't even know really what a pathologist was. I just, I knew what pathology was. And I know that with certain diseases, you take a biopsy and you send it to the pathologist and then you get your pathology report. But I never really thought more about it until I saw that show. And then I realized, oh, a pathologist is actually a specialty in medicine. Like a doctor, you know, going to MD or DO school can then go on to pathology residency and become a pathologist. And so I thought that was really cool. I'd never heard about it. And so that's like the last I thought about pathology until yesterday when I actually went to a pathology lab and rotated for a couple days. And my program just told me, hey, you're going here. You know, you're going you're gonna to work with this pathologist, PA, for a couple days and just see what they do and stuff like that. Which I thought, okay, cool. It makes sense. You know, pathology is a, uh, is a branch of medicine. So, you know, MDs, DOs, they go into pathology. So it just makes sense that a PA would be working with a pathologist. And so I get there and I don't see physician assistant on the guy's door because he's got an office. I don't see physician assistant. 
I see pathologist assistant and I go, well, that's interesting. Is this like something new that they're calling these guys? Like PAs that work in pathology? And then I started actually working with one of the students, one of the pathology associate students. And she told me like, no, dude, we're not, P we're not PAs. We're not physician assistants. We are PAs pathology assistants. And that's a whole different, uh, different kind of degree. And it's actually extremely similar to the PA physician assistant route. I'm gonna focus, it's a sharp turn and an intersection. Okay, and yeah, now I'm gonna take this nice and sharp. Yep, okay. Uh, so yeah, so it's a whole different branch of medicine. It's like a whole different, uh, it's a whole different graduate program. So just like physician assistants, pathology assistants are uh, physician extenders. You know, they're like mid-levels. They're not a lab tech. They're not like a histology tech. They're not a technician, but they're also not a pathologist. So they're somewhere in the middle. You know, they handle the more complicated specimens and they prepare them in a certain way. And they, uh, they do like a preliminary report and stuff like that. And then they actually go to the pathologist who makes the final report and the diagnosis and stuff like that. So honestly, I never even knew about this. I never knew it was a possibility. And apparently there's thousands of them. You know, it's not nearly as common as a physician assistant, but it's a very common thing. And it's just, it's really cool. You know, I've only been out kind of in the field in medicine, you know, in PA school for a few weeks now. This is technically still my first rotation. I did, you know, three weeks at GYN, Women's Health, and then I'm gonna do two weeks at uh, a gastroenterology office. And then these two days, they just kind of slipped in there because things worked out. So, and like just in these three weeks, I cannot even tell you how much I've learned. It's been absolutely incredible. Like things that you read about in the book and even see videos of, like just do not compare. It's nothing until you actually see it in real life or uh, hear about it, hear the patient's story, feel an actual specimen. Like, man, it's, you learn so much more in person. It's so much more, like, I guess I can't even form my thoughts right now. You just learn incredibly more in person than you would like from a book or a computer. That being said, I do recognize that the year we spent in didactic was absolutely crucial because a lot of the things that they talked about, you know, like in my rotation, in pathology, in women's health, like most of those things I do know at least a good amount about. I know like the risk factors and then when I see the patient, it makes sense. And I know uh, like the pathophysiology, I know what's going on inside. I know generally how to treat it unless I look something up really specifically and then I know exactly how to treat it. I know the risk factors, like all that stuff that we learned in didactic year come into play and then you just see them in person and they just make much more sense and it sticks. So, and then getting to see everything from the pathophysiological side was just absolutely incredible. Because for instance, like I'll give a really good example. So like I was studying from Pants Prep Pearls, by the way, there's that pretty lake. I'm going up to Heritage Hill Brewery again uh, to sit at their cafe for like the next three, four hours and just study. Yes, I know it's a Friday night, and yes, I know I'm studying, and no, I don't care. I want to I wanna do well on my Eeyore, I want to do well on my boards, and I just want to learn this stuff because I want to be a good PA. So much more important for me to do that on a Friday night than to go do anything else. That being said, if I put in a good three or four hours, I might have a beer. Might even have two. Who knows? Anyway, okay. So yeah, it's, what was I gonna say? The example, I was gonna give a really good example. So for instance, let's say, um, okay, kind of a, a little bit of a trigger warning here. This might be kind of graphic, the thing that I'm talking about and some people might really not like hearing about this topic. So just you're forewarned right now, this is a sensitive topic, okay? Let's talk about missed abortions, you know, uh, miscarriages. So most common, you know, in the first trimester, and the most common reason for a miscarriage, an organic miscarriage, you know, um, is chromosome abnormalities. So if something goes on like a monosomy or a trisomy, uh, basically something goes on with the chromosomes, the body, what's up guys? Uh, basically like the baby just doesn't form. And if it does form in very rare cases, like it's very deformed and stuff like that. But most of the time it just, it doesn't form. And then the pregnancy is lost and either it comes out or partially comes out or it gets retained and then you know doctors have to go in there with a curette uh, or maybe suction and just and get it out so that it doesn't cause the mother any harm so anyway so i knew 
about that. I knew the stats. And then, you know, talking to my preceptor and talking to some, uh, like seeing some pregnant patients and stuff, we talked a little bit about abortions, like uh, miscarriages and things like that. And so I thought I had a pretty good grasp on them. I thought I kind of understood enough, at least for the board, obviously not enough in a practical sense, but I definitely knew a good amount. And then at pathology today, uh, they had a specimen and it was a missed abortion. And I was expecting like a small, you know, like malformed or unformed fetus or something like that. And I was just really ready to just see something really disturbing and really sad. And I was kind of mentally preparing for that. And then basically what I see is a bunch of goop. It's kind of like brownish, obviously reddish, blood tinged goop. And I asked the, uh, the pathology assistant that I was shadowing, that I was working with, like, so I was actually kind of expecting to see some fetal parts, like why is this just nothing but goop? And then he did kind of a very short review with me saying, well, you know, most first trimester, um, most first trimester spontaneous abortions or missed abortions are basically just completely malformed. And then I asked him, oh, like a molar pregnancy. And then he said, no, it's nothing like a molar pregnancy. And he actually showed me a molar pregnancy and it was, He's right, totally, totally different. Looks not even close. You know, it's supposed to be, it's called a, like a cluster of grapes on an ultrasound. And then I see what it looks like and it's basically, yeah, just a bunch of these little white bubbles. And man, like having seen those actual specimens in person and then reviewing the pathophysiology and then just really thinking about the whole disease process and the treatment and everything like that, that's how it really came together. That's how it's, I don't think I'll ever forget anything about missed abortions and spontaneous abortions again, because that was just absolutely incredible. Very sad, for sure. Like, I'm not saying it's a good thing, good incredible. It's a very bad incredible, but just seeing all of that from every possible angle, from the actual live patient, to the theory in the book, to the actual specimen in the pathology lab, now it sticks. Now I totally understand. And then, you know, I, I don't want to say totally, because I guarantee if I see it in a different situation, I'll have a whole new respect for the, uh, I'll have a whole new respect for the condition and things like that. So anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is when you see things in person, especially in multiple different ways, you learn on a completely, completely different level. And it's just, it's so gratifying and just to understand much better than you did. You think you understand something from a book and then you see it and sometimes it's just not even close to what you expected or you understand it completely differently or if it's something that you you know kind of understood maybe enough to do well on the exam you kind of be able to do something but you don't like really know it well yeah then you see it in real life and then you know it then you totally know it so i guess what i'm saying is i'm just extremely happy to be in second year first year was definitely, it had its ups and downs. It was very gratifying to do well on exams. It was very terrifying to do poorly on exams. And then, you know, knowing stuff and learning stuff was cool, but it came at you so fast, you could never really sit back and appreciate it because you were already like, you know, a month behind for the next exam. So like didactic year, there's no better way to say it, it sucks. Didactic year is really, really difficult. You know, you're learning all this really cool stuff and you can't really even appreciate it because you're just so stressed out trying to learn more cool stuff. But then when it comes together in clinical year and you just see this stuff and you hear the patients talk about it and you hear the pathologist and you see the specimens and you touch them, you know, with your hands, man, it's, it is so incredibly gratifying to see this stuff and also to understand it. You know, I can understand like, if I was still, if, if I was doing all this before PA school, before didactic year, and like, for instance, if I was a medical assistant or a scribe and I saw something cool, like, yeah, I think it's cool. I definitely think it's really interesting and I'd be like in awe wondering about it. But then having the knowledge, having at least the knowledge from didactic year to understand it to a very high degree, definitely not like a freaking pathologist or like a doctor or someone who like really, really knows this stuff very well but just to have a pretty dang good grasp on the pathophysiology and what happens to people and why it happens and things like that and then seeing it in person and touching it and hearing people talk, it's the coolest thing ever. So I'm actually here, I'm actually driving around a little bit more than 
than I was planning on because the uh, the brewery is right back there on the left. I don't know if you saw it. So I'm just going to go a little bit further just to wrap this video up and then I'm going to go sit my butt down and study and study hard. So I guess what I want to say to conclude this video is if you're aiming at PA school or med school, nurse practitioner school, whatever it is you guys are doing that are watching my videos, I just want to tell you that whatever step in the process you're in, whether you're pre-PA and you're like working your butt off, probably doing a job and trying to get these good grades, or if you're already in didactic year, you know, working your butt off, just trying to stay in the dang program, I know you're going through hell. I absolutely know, and I've been there probably longer than most of you, maybe not as long as some of you, but I just, I know that you're really going through a lot and it's really difficult. And the only thing keeping you going is this like vague dream of being a PA or a doctor, NP, whatever you're doing. And I just want to tell you that even being a few weeks out of didactic year and into clinical year, it's already worth it. Like I would not trade the last few days for anything, absolutely anything in my life I would give for these last few days. And that includes this whole past year of grinding and like not sleeping much and just being, you know, stressed all the time and sometimes getting depressed and like everything that comes with, you know, how hard you have to work. It's all worth it for your first like few days on rotations. And then I can only imagine like once you've got rotations down and you've gotten all this experience and you're actually like, somewhat qualified to be a clinician yeah you're always still learning you know you're never you never know everything there's no way uh but but when you have like that even higher level of knowledge and you can actually practice this stuff and like affect people's lives i can only freaking imagine how gratifying that is compared to just seeing some stuff in person like i did today so it gets better i'm just i want to tell you that it gets better it's worth it no it's never going to be easy that's not what you're chasing if you think, oh, I'm just gonna get into PA school and then life is easy, I'm here to tell you it's not, and it won't be, and it never will be. And if you think, oh, I'm gonna get through PA school and then be a PA and, you know, make all this money and, you know, have this great lifestyle, well, yeah, okay, you're gonna make money and you're gonna have a good lifestyle, but it's not gonna be easy. It's never gonna be easy, and if it is, you're a crappy PA, you know? Like, you always need to be learning and being humble and getting better and better and better and better and better because otherwise you're gonna hurt people. So, man, I just, I keep going off on tangents. I keep getting distracted by how beautiful it is here. But, okay, anyway, so, I just wanna tell you that your hard work is worth it. And also your hard work is never gonna end and you don't want it to end because you really wanna do the best for people and you just wanna keep understanding more and more. And I'm also here to tell you that understanding even just this little bit that I've started understanding from my very little time on rotations is the most gratifying thing I have ever felt in my entire life. So it's worth it, guys. Keep grinding, keep studying, keep, you know, watching helpful YouTube videos if that's what keeps you going. I know it's what kept me going in PA school. That's why I made this channel. Just keep it up, all right? I'm proud of you. You're gonna get there if you want it bad enough. And yeah, that's, that's all I really got to say. And now I'm totally lost. But it's kind of nice here, so I'm just going to keep riding around. Anyway, okay. So I'm probably just going to cut the video off right here because all I'm going to do is just drive over to the brewery and sit my butt down in a chair with a really nice view and maybe like a, like a hot cider or something and just get to studying. You know what I'm gonna do? Since there's probably only a couple minutes left until I get to the brewery, I'm going to just kind of shut up and do the rest of this drive because it is really pretty. And if you want to stay with me and just check out the foliage, I might put some music on or something. Uh, well, I'm gonna put the music on like in the video when I edit it. And you know, just enjoy the foliage. It's beautiful out here. Maybe you're in a place in the country that doesn't have foliage and I feel bad for you. But also, I bet you have a much nicer winter than we do if you're like down south or something. But anyway, enjoy the colors. Hopefully you see that right there, it's beautiful.
And yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time. Let me know if you want me to keep doing these because they don't take a whole lot of effort for me, but I mean, if they're, if nobody's watching them or not getting anything out of them, I'm not gonna take up, you know, YouTube's uh, space on their servers and I'm not gonna put in the effort that does uh, take to make them. So just let me know. And if there's anything that you want me to talk about kind of more free form like this, you know, not planned out, but just kind of to, you know, get an idea in my head and riff on it while I drive or ride my bike. You know, let me know that too. I, I'd be really curious. And then I'm obviously gonna oblige and talk about what you want me to talk about. So yeah. Oh yeah, there's the brewery. All right, guys. It's been a great ride. Thank you for coming with me. And I'll see you next time.